Welcome to another OCD Recovery Instagram Live. I've got to admit, I'm dying a bit today because I was up all, all night watching the uh, Tyson Fury Wilder fight. So I haven't had much sleep at all today, um, but it was worth it. It was, uh, it was uh, I don't like to miss um, boxing for any of the big, great fights. So um, yeah, didn't get much sleep. Uh, drank way too much caffeine, trying to stay up. Uh, usually not a recommended thing for people um, that I work with drinking lots of caffeine um, at night, but to stay up for those fights because they're always on in the States, um, that, that, that that's often required. Uh, so I thought I'd come on here today um, and talk a little bit about um, do some sort of questions and answers for OCD, uh, covering some things like that, and also talk about the benefits of exercise in relation to, uh, because obviously the boxing was on yesterday, um, in relation to that. So talking about um, talking about the benefits of exercise. Now, I'll go into the question and answers in the second part, um, but I'll cover the um, I'll cover the, the sports section now. In relation to fitness, what you've got to think is, well, not what you've got to think. Let's just sort of paint a picture of what's going on there with that. Um, you are, you're going to see accounts that, that know very little about OCD that are going to claim that sport is and exercise is a sort of be all and end all uh, for OCD recovery and anxiety. Now, the reason for that being is because they know very, very little uh, usually about anxiety disorders. Anxiety disorders you can't treat with exercise alone. If it was that simple, I would just recommend to people go running all the time. It's not like that. Um, there's loads of terrible advice in. Um, out there that's common and commonly circulate, circulated, a uh, little bit slow today, um, is, is commonly circulated because people don't understand it. And the reason for that being is that the, a lot of the knowledge is partly true to some degree and then gets circulated because people think, oh, it must, it must mean that it applies to OCD and actual anxiety disorder. So let's just take someone who's a bit anxious and a bit stressed, not with an anxiety disorder. It'd be very common for them to, 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 to be able to go for a run, do some exercise or something like that and feel a lot better. But when you've got an anxiety disorder, that is definitely, definitely, definitely not going to be the case. It's a disorder. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't just lift because you want it to lift, uh, because you do some exercise. And it's not as simple as that. So when you watch, for example, like with the boxing, and you've got Tyson Fury do this amazing mental health comeback story where he was suicidal on drugs to gaining a heavyweight championship and uh, make it, turning his life completely around. It's not as simple as that. Uh, everyone has varying degrees of mental health problems. We can't just take someone in the middle of bipolar uh, and, and, and sort of get them working out, get them fit, uh, do a little bit of brief work on them and off they go and they'll be better in... Uh, in in two years perfectly and be be in that position it doesn't work like that everyone's got different journeys they're on different degrees of mental health problems so you've got a mixture of stuff that's going on there that uh that is that is a large part of the problem because people then feel lost and think well if tyson fury could do it why can't i do it and 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 so on it's not it's not it's not as simple as that now, the other thing is people, so people off, you, you'll see lots of accounts where they say like, oh, exercise completely changed my life. If it wasn't for that, all my OCD went, my anxiety went. That's not true at all. You can't get rid of OCD like that. I tried that for years. I owned a health club and I used to go to the gym all the time and I uh, tried to outrun, outlift OCD for years. Didn't work. You can't do that when you've got HO, harm OCD, hammering away at you with chronic guilt in the background 24-7. That's not going to do anything. Uh, it, it, it does. It lifts your mood a certain amount, but then the rest of it is hammering on in the background all the time, making you feel guilty. Uh, you know, you walk in the gym, I was literally thinking, God, all, this, all the people working in this gym, if only they knew what I'd done. If I walked in a nightclub, as soon as I walked in the door, I used to think if only anyone knew what I'd done, they wouldn't even be able to look at me the same on dates, whatever. That was what it's like. You know that journey, you've been in that journey most likely with harm OCD or in it right now and can relate to that feeling. 
So it's not as simple as that, that's the first thing. So you've got exercise, why do I recommend it? Obviously it's fantastic for your mental health in terms of the chemicals in, term, in your brain for helping lift the mood with uh, endorphins, fantastic for that. And it gives you great life structure, uh, helps your body, especially when your body's got tense from muscle tension, from uh, anxiety and stress and so on. It's very good for that, very calming, um, very good for energy levels, for, for just for the everything you need. If you think of OCD like having a bucket with a hole in it, um, the bucket with a hole in it, the hole is the OCD. And whilst we're trying to fix that hole, we want to keep filling the bucket with water. And the water is the exercise, the healthy eating and so on. So you've got constant flow of energy going through there. And then when we fix that hole, it won't fall out. But for the time being, it is going to fall out because you've got OCD there that's suffering, OCD suffering that's going on. And as we get rid of the suffering, then we fi fix that hole. So that's very important to think about with these journeys. Is, is, is the kind of misinformation that's out there. This account's all about telling it how it is and looking at things that work. Everything that I talk about, any, any point or anything you can debate, you can question, you can put comments in, yeah, I encourage that because I like my ideas tested. I like to see that because that's how we improve, both me and the community. So I think that's very, very important. Um, and I think another thing that's, that, that's, that's very important is if you don't understand something, say, put comments in, say, I don't understand this part or whatever, encourage, encourage, I want to encourage that because it's, it, that's how you're going to learn, that's how you're going to understand it because it's not easy to get better from OCD. Uh, it, it, of, course it's, it, of course, it just takes practice and time and most people underestimate that. But when you get on top of it, you can do it. And of course, you can, it, it, with, with practice, we can all do it. But the problem is there's so limited understanding of OCD that mo so many people, majority of people, do tend to stay stuck sort of up and down continuously or uh, with 80% of symptoms reduced but still floating along up and down because to get under it fully takes a lot of time and practice, which, which that route isn't understood usually. Now, what I wanted to talk about was misinformation. So you've got things like, let's take for example, um, tonight. Uh, so last night, or this morning, I was watching the Fury fight and that was on at what, 6 a.m. where I am here. And it's, you're looking at, uh, obviously what was my sleep cycle like? Sleep cycle was, I went to bed at about 7.30 because I've been working all, all day on, on uh, yesterday. And I went to bed at 7.30, which I only thought was going to be a nap for 10 minutes, end up sleeping 45 minutes. So obviously then I was awake, which was kind of what I was trying to do a little bit of because I wanted a nap because I knew the fight was coming up. So then I had energy and plus a few energy drinks and so on to stay up, watch the fight, and then I went back to sleep. So I was in back, back and forth asleep for about five and a half hours, six hours, split between different periods. Now, the problem with that is... The cycle of the sleeping is 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 not very very healthy that in in that night. Uh, obviously not a regular. I'm using this as an example to relate to people's stories with sleep. So you've got the sleep split up between three hours, two hours, one hour, and so on. So you're not getting into the deep R. Well, we are going into deep REM sleep, but you're pulling out of it and back and forth a lot. So then you've got all the caffeine mixed in that throws your sleep off, same as alcohol does. So so you've got a mixture there of things that aren't helping. Now. The problem is that even a lot of sleep centers still recommend so many sleep hygiene habits. Now, obviously those hygiene habits in that situation with me there, it would be obviously beneficial to go to bed at a reasonable time and to lie in bed and not get up constantly, especially not have caffeine. Uh, so that would be not very good sleep habits. However, after a certain point, what we're doing is we're chasing. We're trying to make sure that we have all the perfect sleep situation with a sleep watch, with no caffeine, with everything so that we're really monitoring everything and then we get more scared of not being able to sleep and so on and so on and so on. And that becomes a problem because we're designed to actually live and sleep with noise and with someone knocking us and all kinds of things, right? So that never... Um, that what happens is people then get scared of that and then what if I can't go to sleep and so on and so on. Now I'm somebody who can sleep for anything. I've slept through a fire before. Yes, I've slept through a fire before. A terrible situation many years ago. I was in, a, in my house and there was a fire started downstairs in the corridor and I was in, 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 in bed with my girlfriend at the time and uh, she was just trying to wake me up and I was trying to go back to sleep. And so she ended up getting up and then she grabbed me and made me get up. But I just wanted to go back to sleep even though there was... Uh, it, we, 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 there was a fire outside. So that's not a good example of sleeping. Uh, that's someone who's sleeping to, to, in that situation, just going back to sleep and forgetting about things. So I can be the far opposite too. Um, 
so so you don't it's not like uh, i can sleep through it most noises uh n n no problems whatsoever but when i had sleep problems when i was suffering from anxiety i had a situation whereby um, I was very scared of going to sleep. So I was always monitoring sleep. I was always watching sleep and thinking, God, I hope tonight. It was like a battleground getting into bed every night. And uh, it certainly isn't like that now. I couldn't care less if I slept or if I didn't. And like, for example, today, um, it, you can even look at something like this, which is, which is quite good to, to demonstrate this point. When I started this Instagram Live, uh, obviously I hadn't slept much because I'd started the Fury, watched the Fury fight, but I started off slowly, one, because I was getting into the role of it, but two, I thought I was a lot more tired than I actually was, and I thought, shall I do an Instagram Live right now? But when I got speaking into it, then you, you realise actually, yes, everything's flowing fast and I, and I can speak and, and comprehend everything how I want to. So a lot of things is our relationship with the feelings. So although I'm in a recovered position now, I can still have things that are traits of anxiety and so on where I could look at and think, ah, I've over, uh, I, I, I'm thinking I'm worse than I am for, for, for anything. Maybe I've got a cold, maybe I've got flu, whatever. And then you, you realize OCD is very, very sneaky like that. I mean, sometimes for me, it tries to catch me on things like if I bang my head walking through a doorway, uh, it will go, your short-term memories, but what it will do is I'll just feel like my short-term memory's gone and it will interject with a short-term memory feeling sh feeling off, even when I haven't even done, thought that much. And it, it, it will dive in, the same as if I'm walking through a shopping center and there's kids there, it might j jump out with an intrusive thought of to kick one of them and it feels like an intrusive urge out of nowhere with no anxiety, so so we'll, we'll do that. Um, but obviously it doesn't concern me whatsoever because of the unconditional self and life acceptance and a good understanding of ship, a good understanding of my relationship with OCD, so it makes it makes it sets a framework there that doesn't allow OCD to get hold like it used to. So I think it's very important that we think about all the information that we hear and the knowledge and things that we gain on OCD, and we apply what we can at different times. So yes, sleep hygiene is very important, but we don't want to go overboard on sleep hygiene. Yes, exercise is very important, but if we go overboard, we're not going to get much more gain than if we were already doing so, so much. So I always say to people, get into exercise three or four times a week. Try and keep a balanced enough sleep pattern um, without sort of energy drinks, alcohol and stuff right before bed. But obviously as a human, and if you haven't got a problem with alcohol, uh, you're going to be going out and drinking uh, on sometimes. You know, I don't drink like I used to. When I used to drink, not, not that I had a problem with alcohol, but when I used to uh, drink, I was, when I was suffering from OCD, I was much younger at the time. So I was going out four times a week, drinking nine, ten drinks a night, and, uh, and, 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 and I was functional in that. And then later on, as I got to uh, a few, few years later, the anxiety, physical symptoms were worse. I couldn't drink like that anymore. I was getting very bad acid reflux. Now I probably get acid reflux because of a genetic condition I have in my stomach anyway with the gastroesophageal reflux dis dis uh, disease, which I have from my father because he has a very bad, his, his stomachs have been very bad all his life, lots of problems with stomachs. Uh, I have to be careful what I drink and eat, but I still drink and go and have wine, whiskey, whatever on nights out and, uh, and, and fizzy drinks and so on. But I just keep a balance of how often I'm doing it, not so many nights back to back. So, so you have to balance things and weigh them up. Um, so my point about all of that is it's about getting a balance. It's about working with what works for you and seeing how that applies to yourself. And it's important to do that because Otherwise, we become too specific. Nowadays, everyone's got a Fitbit watch, which we use, I use with people for sleep problems so that they can see how much they're actually sleeping. I can monitor that. We're not getting into so much sleep tracking, but they can give themselves an, give themselves, um, give themselves an understanding of how much they're sleeping because often they think they're sleeping three hours when they're sleeping six, seven. Now, with those things, people are becoming obsessed with tracking everything, like we're trying to make ourselves live to 105. The problem with that is yes, we can do, but um, we're becoming so obsessed with that, people are missing out on lots of the joys of life. Um, you, you, you don't wanna get that obsessed with it because now people are having sleep problems because they're checking too much on their sleep and then their mind's focusing on that and it's something that's to happen without our noticing it, same as our heart and breathing and so on. So it's very important to get a balance, to strike a balance with everything. It's very easy today in this modern world to be so into fitness and health that we're trying to live perfectly and have all the muscles balanced and be in such great shape. But then loads of things are going backwards. You're seeing people on dating apps more than ever. When I speak to a lot of young people, they're on dating apps so much, they're messaging so much, but they're having so, limited, so less sex than, than, than generations before. And I always say to people, well, you know, at the end of the day, 
you're not going to be thinking in the future oh i'm so glad i sent that that nice text to somebody uh you're not going to care about that you'll be thinking oh well i hope i had uh enjoyed having sex with different people or my sex life with my one partner or whatever so you've got to prioritize what things mean as well in life in, in relation to the grand scale of things because people get too focused on getting everything absolutely perfect all the meals perfect for the fitness for the fitness body because everyone wants to be in such great shape and then how much do people actually care about this to that extent and how much time are you losing to that and is is, is it, it it could is there something you could be doing with your time better i mean people are so focused on trying to be uh, cool and how they look and not focusing on things that they can achieve so when people tell me about ocd and, and time and say they haven't got time to do things read the books uh, study things on ocd work do exposures and so on they do people are watching netflix a lot uh, usually and they can cut that out or cut that down and find the time to do the things yes there is a lot of reading with what i do with working with people yes that does need to get done uh, it's not extremely difficult if you're in university you'd have to read a lot more books and if you're at university you can still fit it in uh, it's a case of time management it's a case of every everything you, you, is getting the right time management and getting a uh, good structure and then staying motivated to your goals the motivation plays a large part now and having a clear direction so you know what you're doing because with OCD it's very easy to not have a clear direction and then you lose motive motivation very quickly so I think it's very important that we have a structure of what we want to do and I think it's very important that we um, that at the same time we take a balanced approach looking at the things that mean things to us and how we'll look at things in the future what things do we want to improve and what things are we going too far ahead on and so on and I think that's a very important thing uh, to cover today now let me have a look at some of these questions and I'll cover them quickly. What's the difference between unwanted and intrusive thoughts? Unwanted thoughts, intrusive thoughts, intrusive feels intrusive. Unwanted, is, I mean, that's more or less the same thing. They're not by definition any different. Um, how to unlatch from sensory motor OCD or being focused on stomach? That takes a while. There's quite a bit involved in that. What's usually driving that is the fear that it'll be awful if you'll be stuck like that forever. And the fear, that, so fear of it persisting fear of it uh, upsetting your life, fear that you're going to be stuck like that forever. Those are the driving forces. Those are their own individual irrational beliefs that do need breaking down. Can there be HOCD crushes that feel as real as it can get? Yeah, OCD will feel as real as it can get. That's exactly how it works. When infatuation comes with a completely false image of your partner and you're with your partner because he fits that unreal image in your mind. Can that be worked on? I have RSD. I don't really understand that question. If you could just rephrase that for me, I'll have a look at that again. Is the book enough for unconditional acceptance? The book is very helpful, but obviously with what I'm doing in coaching in the groups and in the one-to-one -one is very specific to OCD. The books don't cover it enough in detail uh, by any means. Uh, they, get, they get there and they do do it, but the speed that the, we do it and how I approach it and come at it and... To, and, and sort of go from from many angles attacking it from many angles is what really gets under it and that that has been my life work of, of building all of that to do that um i think that when i bring out the book that i'm writing on ocd it will cover it in a lot more detail but it still helps massively to have somebody watching it from the other side so they can see how you're operating because ocd recovery is a bit of an art there is a lot going on in a work rate, uncertainty, unconditional self-acceptance. If you try and bolt down unconditional self-acceptance, you won't feel the sort of mindful component. If you, um, if 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 you're like trying to do loads of internal compulsions and reassurance and so on, that needs sort of coming up from other angles. So there's quite a lot that's that's at play there. Once you get an understanding of it, it flows very well, but it just takes a while to do that. Did you have medication for your OCD? No. I need help with the unconditional self and love acceptance. My, my my head keeps disconnecting. I don't understand your question there. If you just go into that in a bit more detail. I have a fear of contaminating other people, food or drinks in a very disgusting way. I searched for info about but couldn't find anything. Yeah, well, the fears of contamination is, is again relates to uh, unconditional self-acceptance but also relates to... Um, it, 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 the, yeah, it, it, the, that is primarily unconditional self-acceptance there for getting into that. With exposures, obviously, to break down the contamination. Because there will be a behavioural component through the, through the exposures need to target uh, till the unconditional self-acceptance comes into play. So you've got a really 
uh, th there'll be a lot of exposures that need to be done, but without an understanding of, of why you're doing them and, uh, and OCD and unconditional self-acceptance, it makes it difficult to what you can just do the exposures and not move forward because you keep making yourself anxious again in your head. So you need to come at it from both angles. Can you have OCD crushes that feel real? You can have anything that feels real. I have recovered incredibly, but I find I'm at a stage of being unsure of my feelings, like feeling so weird to be happy that I question it. Feeling normal is amazing, but I know what it says. Yeah, it's to do with fear of how you're feeling and probably fear of fear uh, returning, that kind of thing. Uh, fear of fear, the cycle of, of, of being stuck again and so on. Being constantly on look, being being on guard. That's it, I think. I think I've covered um, all the questions there today, guys. I will see you on the next Instagram Live when I've had a bit more sleep and uh, I look forward to speaking to you guys then. Take it easy. Bye.